So I'm joined by uh, Paul Holden Ridgeway, the head brewer and founder of uh, Bagco here in uh, Dish for North Yorkshire. So Paul, uh, how did you get into brewing? Um, well, it's kind of an interesting sort of way we got into it. Is I, I took on Blind Jack's Real Ale House, and at the time we were serving six Real Ales. And I, re I very quickly realised from going in there, I didn't know that much about beer and the product while I was serving. So in an effort to improve my game, be able to intelligently answer the questions what people were asking me. Um, I put myself up for a day, two days um, over at Roosters Brewery uh, and in return I'd work for them for free, they'd give me lots of information um, about beer. So that kind of started the journey of <coughs> you know, where we are today and so I worked for them for two or three years and off the back of that it was it's all very well reading books and doing courses but until you actually put you know the methodology into practice uh, which is it was all about. Um, I kind of felt that I was only repeating, regurgitating information what I'd learned. So then I got into home brewing, doing full mash brewing, and um, and then from there I started doing sort of some professional brewing courses as well at the same time. Uh, in between running the pub with my wife, then I did that for a couple of years. We then took Blind Jacks on as our own business after about five or six years, and we decided at this point to put some more microbrewery. Once we did that, we were actually quite surprised how um, I was really nervous about going into it, albeit it was almost like a nano brewery. Um, it was only 18 gallons at the time. So we did that for two, three years. We were fortunate enough to win some awards. And I remember going at the time, I was going over to the States quite a lot and looking for inspiration out there, particularly with dark beers, which I really wasn't into at the time. And I kept getting a lot of dark beers on, and I'm trying to like these beers. And I just, for me personally, I just found them a little bit too samey, mm. so I thought, well, I'll go out to America. And a lot of the American beer certainly wasn't coming to me at the time. I wasn't going out looking for it, which is exactly what I should have been doing for my research. Went over to America, you know, easy as you like, finding beers left, right, and centre, and started to really enjoy their milk stouts. Mm. And then I was utterly horrified by the hopping rates of their IPAs. <laughs> I was like, what the hell is this? I can't drink it. And then after a few pints of it, I'm like, this is the best beer I've ever drank in my entire life once my palate had been totally destroyed by it. So, um, and this was at the time when the likes of uh, Roosters, they were getting hoppier and hoppier. And, you know, everything over here was starting to change. And a lot of people were seeking inspiration from America. So, you know, like a lot of other people, I brought that back with me and started up in the flavor levels, up in the aroma levels, dry hopping, that sort of thing, messing with yeasts, looking for more sort of um, higher alpha acid to put in and, and go a bit crazy really, because on 18 uh, gallons you can really mess around as much as you like, you know, and, uh, and it was a big success, it was a great success for the pub. So then we started thinking, maybe we can take this to the next level, and we won uh, York Beer Festival, and uh, a good friend of ours sort of said, you know, let's do a big brewery. Uh, and me and my wife were already talking about just doing a five barrel brewery at the time, and uh, we're like, all right. So the first thing was, I was getting carried away brewing six, seven, eight, nine percent beers. And the first order of the day was to come up with a session ale. And I was like, oh, you know, oh God, I don't, want, you know, I don't really want to. Uh, having far too much for brewery strong beers, which I'm selling loads on. And um, so I kind of got a bit worried about that because I hadn't really brewed uh, a weak beer before. And with having Blind Jacks, um, we found a lot of the weak beers were quite samey. And, and I guess a lot of this has to, you know, in for some brewers, not all, but some brewers, it, you can see why, because unfortunately, a lot of the pubs in this, in this country, their dictate in a price is represented by gravity and not necessarily flavor or aroma. Mm. And so I know when I was managing the pub, we had a price matrix structure where 3.8, I couldn't exceed this price, 4%, I couldn't exceed this price and so forth. So I was like, well, let's go 3.8, but let's increase everything. And let's not worry about the financials behind it. So we started tinkering around, and the only beer I could really think about at the time, which I really enjoyed, which was 3.8, was Dead Pony Club. So I was like, that is what I want in a 3.8% session. I want bags and bags of hops with a nice malt base behind it, um, but which is still very easily drinkable. So if we could produce a beer which drinks flavor and aroma-wise above its uh, level, that's what we're going for. So that's where Comfortably Numb came from. But the actual name was given to me. Well, we really wanted a beer which sort of reflected a mood at the time you were kind of drinking it, or maybe a mood five pints down the line. Um, and a friend of ours who's a Pink Floyd fan was like, you know, you want Comfortably Numb? I'm like, love it. <laughs> so we did that. 
So the next job was naming the company, which we just came up with all sorts of weird names. And at the time I was thinking about opening, I was thinking maybe we should do a distillery as well because it can harmonise so much with the brewery. And so me and my wife were sat watching TV one night and, and the devs came up with, how about a bad company? And I was like, I like it, what's it sound? Brewing and distilling company. And I was like, brilliant, love it. Yeah, that perfectly works. You know, so we contacted this friend of ours, like, we've got a name, we've got a name, bad company. And I'm an absolute, you know, musical peasant. And so uh, he's like, oh yeah, that's a band. And I was like, is it? And I was like, all right, okay, you know, like, unbelievable, you know, the rest of the world seems to know this, not me. And um, so we're like, right, we agree on bad company. And then that's how the beer names came from that, from let's sort of be inspired by musically named beers, which I, in an ideal world, we wanted to reflect a mood at the same time, but actually that's very, very difficult to achieve. So that's how Bad Company came around. So when did you, when did you open? We opened, we, we started trading, well we actually took this premises on in January uh, 2014. And we then, our first beer went out in May, June of last year. And what was that? Uh, the very first one was the Comfortable Enum. Right. Um, we also did the Love Over Gold. Uh, and. Um, we did that, but I wasn't really—I really wasn't happy with it. Uh, it was um, so we tweaked it a few times, and again, like the Wild Gravity, which is our IPA, we, we tweaked that. To, we did two or three brews, sort of as a base level, and then try to improve on it every single time, improve the aroma, improve the bitterness on it, mm. and make it more drinkable without, yeah. sacri without sacrificing flavour. And um, and that's where we went from there. So tell us about your range of beers, and where do you get inspiration from for the beers that you do brew? Well. As far as inspiration uh, for the beers, originally it was just purely all American. Yeah. Um, but once you start doing, you know, a little bit of research and development, like going out and drinking and going into food shops and looking at different flavours, different spices, different herbs, you know, loads of brewers are doing this. You know, they're, they're looking for new flavours, and so you can take inspiration from everything. You know, we're going to take some inspiration from you know, nature if you want. I'm into foraging. We're going to do a forage beer, and a bit like. Uh, what a conversation we were having earlier, it tr tried to do a seasonal one. So we're going to be doing, uh, we're going to, you know, we're going to do an elderflower one, but we're going to go crazy with the elderflower, uh, see what we can get into that. With the forage one, we're going to go out and collect berries, collect some wild yeast, um, hope for the best, uh, do something like that. Um, and so, you know, our main core four beers, the Wild, uh, the wild Gravity, which is American style IPA, um, the Comfortably Numb, which is our 3.8% 8 .8 session ale, Love Over Gold, which is a very, very pale ale, sort of totally undry hopped. So we've got that sort of nice measure for somebody who doesn't necessarily want a dry hopped two in your face bitter. Mm -hmm. And then our Dazed and Confused, which is mold modeled on an American style milk stout. And the Dazed and Confused originally was the Nezra milk stout, and Nezra American style milk stout. And it's interesting, people always say, oh, well, you know, what the hell is a milk stout? Yeah, an American milk stout. Uh, why is that different to an English milk stout? And actually when you, you sit down and you drink a bunch of American milk stouts against an English one, you'll see the difference. You know, there's a lot of less harsh roasted flavours in there. They go crazy with the amount of lactose, what they put in there. I naturally have a sweet tooth. And uh, so I'm like, yeah, you know, more sweetness, less bitterness, which isn't for everybody, but I really like it. Bags and bags of body to it. And then the rest of our core beers, you know, we're going to do some really cool ones. We're doing a chocolate mint milk stout. We've done that a few times under Nairsbury Brewing Company, which was a big hit. It took us uh, three or four brews to get it just exactly where we wanted it, and we're very happy with that now. Um, cherry chocolate milk stout, which is kind of like your Black Forest Gatto sort of, -esque sort of thing. Uh, we just did an experiment with a bit of a, a sour beer, which we've got going on with um, lots and lots of lime in it and uh, some blackberry. Um, and sort of the beer we're doing today with you guys, which is going to be a big, big brown ale. And um, the more and more we can get into oak aging as well with bourbon casks, all that sort of thing, you know. It's, uh, I, th I think your inspiration, you know, it should almost be endless. <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, when I go up to Scotland and I look at the distilleries, <laughs> you know, and try different whiskies, you know, and different food, you know, you can just think, yeah, you can, well, you know, I want that in a beer. Yeah. You know, it's uh, great. Brilliant. Love it. <laughs>